Today we're going to talk about simple harmonic motion. We've talked already about uh, translations in space, how objects move uh, as, you, as you throw them or move them, how they rotate. And today we're going to talk about how they so-called oscillations. Uh, for example, a child on a, on a swing or a spring that's um, vibrating back and forth. Any kind of vibration is the sort of motion that we're talking about today. Very important in electricity and in atomic and molecular structure as well, understanding the nature of matter. First uh, demonstration about Hooke's Law. Here are some springs ranging from rather weak springs to some, to some tough, strong springs that are tough to, uh, to compress or to stretch. Hooke's Law governs the force of the spring on your hand when you extend or compress the spring. If you extend the spring uh, by a distance x and multiply that extension by the spring constant, that gives the force. And the force that the this, this spring exerts on your hands is always opposite to the displacement this amount of stretch, x. So let's show, uh, for example, for this spring, um, its equilibrium length is about 12 centimeters, as you can see here. If I stretch it out to a length of 17 centimeters, then in this case, x will be 5 centimeters from 12 out to 17. But the force that the spring exerts on my hand is opposite the direction that I displaced it. I displaced it out this way, and it's pulling me back toward equilibrium. The same thing happens if you compress the spring. So if I compress the spring now down to a length of about seven centimeters, then the the spring pushes back on me, it tries to get back into equilibrium again. That's Hooke's Law. Okay, just like in the demo video, the force exerted by a spring on your hand when you stretch or compress it is given by a negative sign, and that tells you that the spring is in that the force is in the direction opposite the displacement. If you pull the string, it tries to uh, uh, pull back on you, etc. K is a spring constant, has units of newtons per meter. That's uh, because the displacement, x, always is in meters. And if the spring constant is in newtons per meter, then you have newtons per meter times meters gives you newtons for a force. And um, so just noting here in this figure, that if the displacement is to the right, the force is to the left. That's this minus sign. It's work. If the dis and this is a positive displacement, the displacement to the right, x will be a positive number, and f of x will therefore be a negative number. Or if you compress the spring, then x will be to the left, will be negative, and the force will be to the right, because you've got a negative uh, sign here and a negative x, and that'll give you a force that's in the plus x direction. Noting here that x is positive, measure positive, toward the right. Yeah, and the displacement, this x, is, is special in the sense that you have to measure it from the unstrained length. This is called, this unstrained length is called the uh, equilibrium position. Of the end of the spring, where it's not stretched and not compressed. Okay, now the applied force, the force that you have to apply with your hand to uh, to stop that spring from pulling you back is just opposite to the actual spring force. So this is the force of your hand. If you displace the, if you pull the, the spring to the right, it's pulling you to the left. So your applied force 
is going to be opposite to the uh, Hooke's law force. Tire pressure gauge. The pressurized air from the, from the tire exerts a force that compresses a spring. So this is your tire, and um, that com pressurized air, compressed air comes into here, pushes down on a plunger, and exerts a force, an applied force on this uh, spring. And um, if the spring constant in the spring is 320 newtons per meter, and the bar indicator extends two centimeters, then the applied force is going to be the spring constant, 320 newtons per meter, times uh, two centimeters, which is 0.02 meters, and that uh, applied force will be uh, 6.4 newtons. Uh, this is an example uh, that will come up a fair amount. Let's actually do this one. If um, in this case, the spring, I and this is a spring that's held vertically. The spring is in, in its unstrained length, but then you attach a ball to it, and then you release it with your hand. It will find a new equilibrium position that's lower than this um, original equilibrium position because that mass will, will pull it down. And you can actually uh, work out what the equilibrium position will be, what this distance will be, in the following way. You can ask what forces there are on this mass. Let's say it's a mass M. What forces exist on that? Well, gravity pulls it down. And then there's a spring force pulling it up. And um, the unstrained length is, is right here. The, the original equilibrium position is here. This new equilibrium position, is if it's not oscillating or doing anything fancy, it'll just sit there. So in that case, mg, that force that pulls it down, will be k, equal to kx, the force that pulls it up the spring force. And in this case, x is d naught. So this is just Hooke's law. And we're just balancing forces here. Now the sum of forces is equal to zero. And that tells you that d naught, this uh, amount that it stretched, is mg divided by k. Then if you want to oscillate this spring, it's going to uh, or this mass on a spring, it's going to go back and forth like this. We'll talk about that right now.